Uh, I'm here to talk about our city's uh, GIS viewer system. Um, my predecessor um, found a need for our field crews, uh, especially our engineers and our operations field crews uh, that do the, you know, cleaning out the sewers and all that fun stuff. Uh, they needed to have their, the, the mapping data out in the field with them, readily available, um, easily accessible. Hmm? All right, better? Um, so he started, uh, we had a software called FieldView back in, in the early 2000s. And then in 2005, he switched over to the, this product that we're still using today called GT Viewer. Um, started slowly, uh, gradually adding functionality. It was based uh, solely in the engineering department. Uh, slowly grew to, uh, we have 400 licenses citywide, 15 different agencies. Uh, and the main thing that we needed was to use offline and online. Uh, like I said, our, our engineers and our city crews, they, you know, we weren't going to pay for wireless for all of them to have it in a truck. So uh, it's fully customizable without programming. I'm an idiot when it comes to any sort of programming. So something that uh, people can use that, that don't have that programming background. Uh, we use FME to translate, um, but we have some pretty complex uh, things going on, but out of the box, they have basic tools for, for converting basic CAD and GIS formats. Um, currently, we have 48 different categories, 135 data sets, close to 500 feature types, orthos dating back to 2007. Uh, we link to internal and external sources, uh, have the ability to do red lines and notes so you can share, um, share sessions or share a PDF or whatnot between people. Um, it has GPS capability uh, that our fire department used to use before we went to a countywide system. Um, and then we, uh, last year, we implemented a, a web version for our contractors um, so they can get the data to uh, alleviate some of the, a lot of the, the requests we were getting uh, from, from our contractors for various information. Um, so basically, and most of this is going to be just a demo, uh, go through uh, some of the things that our engineering uh, folks use. Uh, we have a group from our traffic engineering utility in the background. They can pipe in if, if anything uh, seems, if they do anything else with it. But I'm going to focus basically on our engineering and our operations crew. Um, I can put that back up. Uh, so basically what we have here is, is the basic view um, for GT Viewer. Uh, again, we have engineers. Engineers like CAD. They do not like GIS. Uh, therefore, it definitely has a CAD look to it. Um, you can, like I said, it's fully customizable. Our fire department, however, they wanted a little bit different. They wanted more of a, a GIS view. So we can do that and you definitely get more of a, uh, more of a GIS view. Um, they would use this for um, when, they're, when they're going to their calls, especially in larger uh, condo areas, apartment complexes, they can see where all the driveways are and, and what, what roads and whatnot they can take um, along the malls and whatnot. So like I said, fully customizable, um, but engineers like CAD, so. Uh, most people use, uh, use this CAD view. Um, we have, like I said, there's a lot of data sets we have in here. It's just been growing um, over the last 10 years. Um, pretty much we have everything our, uh, for our planning folks using elder, uh, aldermanic districts, zoning, um, we have all of our data, the engineering mapping data, sanitary, sewer, storm, water, uh, our bikes and walking paths, bridges. Um, our engineering uh, operations, they, they track some of their maintenance so their crews can go. They have what pipes they need to clean, um, their schedules, whatnot. They have all of that in there. Um, more planning stuff. We have all of our street trees for our forestry department so they can go out. Um, like I said, the, the Madison Fire Department, uh, we can turn that off now. Um, 
so like I said, we have our snowing and mowing areas, pretty much everything you can think of in a, in a city. Um, and then you can just drill, drill down and turn things on and off as needed. Um, um, like I said, we, can, we do a lot of external and internal links. Um, so this is GIS data, so you can click your properties um, to get any, any information that you want there. Um, and then we also have the, the latest street project that was done on that street. So um, I'm logged in. So I'm working, I'm running this off my C drive, so all the data is stored locally, but I'm connected to uh, through a VPN so I can hit our network. Um, and it's, this takes them right to their as built and their construction plans. We do that for our streets, our sanitary, um, our, our uh, sewer. Um, water has links to, the, to their data through that. Um, we also do external links. These are our parcel information. Um, so we have our parcel, um, parcel numbers, address, and then any additional addresses that are assigned to that parcel. Um, and then we have uh, outdoor our external links to our assessor database. So um, like our building inspection uses this, that they just go to their parcel. They can just link right to see what the improved value is. This is just off of our, our, uh, our external uh, website. And then the other thing that we can do is uh, we link to Google and Bing. Um, our engineers use this if they want to get to Street View really quick. It's quicker than hopping over to Google. Um, the, the wireless in here is not that quick. It was working before. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm, maybe. Huh. It worked like two minutes ago. Let's try. Hmm. Yeah, it does not want to. There we go. So it'll zoom right to your um, to your map there. The other thing we have here are toolboxes. So we have different tools, um, toolboxes for for various departments. Uh, Water, I showed you the fire department, engineering, uh, traffic engineering has theirs. This just kind of gives you some of the common tools um, and common layers so you don't have to go up and up into here and turn on and off layers. So you can turn on and off street lines. Um, we can put our sanitary and our storm, um, our storm drainage and our water. So you get all the utilities, which gets kind of busy, but And again, you know, all this data is, has all the structure information and, and line information on it. So people have access to, to all the information they need out in the field. Um, and then the other thing we have are uh, really easy queries. Um, again, these are operation crews. They're not going to know how to write an SQL query to query out data. Um, so we have set up uh, different queries. Um, most common one is a street name intersection query um, that does a contains uh, part in it, so you can name any part of that street. Uh, the most common example I always give is uh, in Madison. It's East Washington and Zyre Road. Um, you don't know if it's E A S T Washington E period Washington E space Washington and Zyre. I never know if it's W A or Z I E Z E I. So you can just do Wash and Z, and it'll come up with with the road, and you can just click on it, and it'll zoom right to it. Um, so that's always that's nice for our crews. They don't have to. Or if you're a bad speller, like a lot of people, um, you can just type in the first couple letters, and it'll it'll find find what you're looking for. So we do that for the um, the streets, and then we have our storm structures. Um, you can do sort by date, um, year accepted, what structure type, 
um, and then our MS link, which is our our unique our unique ID. So that'll take you right to uh, right to something. Um, the last thing that our engineers really like is uh, it's a nice quick way to do mailing labels. Um, we do, um, like if they're reconstructing this, um, this street right here and they need to uh, send out a notice to, to groups, Again, they're engineers, they're not GIS people, they're not going to go into ARC and load the parcel data and try and do a spatial query or, or anything like that. So basically all they do is, um, oops, shake. <coughs> they can just draw a box around what they need. Um, highlight it, and then they can just do a count. Um, so you can see it says there's 26 parcels um, in that box. It turns them, it's kind of probably hard for you to re see in that end, but it turns them from that pink to red so you know which ones are selected. Um, if you hit details, um, it gives you all the details from there. So they can just copy that. Um, or you can save it to a text file. Um, this is much easier when you have two screens, but and then just paste that information in. Um, and then they have their parcel numbers so they can create their mailing labels or any form letters or, or whatnot from that data. So like I said, this is um, this can be used online or offline. Um, we update this every two weeks. Um, we have a script that they, um, you know, when they're connected uh, back up in, in, in the office, they just run a script. It copies all the new data over. Um, so they get a new data set every two, two weeks. Some of the other guys that you know use lesser, if they're not using the parcel information, if they're just looking at snow routes or mowing areas or whatnot, they'll update you know every three, four months, six months, a year, uh, until they find something different. And they're just like, oh, this doesn't look right. It's like, well, yeah, you're using a year old data, so there is that kind of issues. But so, is there anything that anybody wants to see or have questions about? Or sure. Uh, laptops and tablets. Um, we have a lot of people that are kind of switching over to the tablets. Um, so we're using um, a lot of Surface tablets, and it. Um, nope. This is a this is actually a physical software that they load on the machine. Um, and that's each computer or tablet is a um, we're on the, because we have so many licenses, so I th think it's five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Yeah. Because you've got 400 and we have. Uh, yeah. I think we're at 500. Uh, yeah. Cheaper than that. Yeah. Field view. <laughs> when we converted from field view, we got a reduced rate. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing it's, yeah, in that five to 600 range. So. And like I said, I mean, we're using, we're using FME to translate, um, so we can just, uh, when I run this every, every two weeks or as needed, um, I just have a bunch of scripts that I run, um, and then it checks them, so. And it's viewer only, not editable, correct? It's not editable. Um, I did talk about the red lines. Um, up here, we have, uh, you can do lines, um, 
And let's just let's do something yellow. Yeah, well. yeah, you can yeah, do. You can do a markup, but not, a, not something editable back to you. No, nope. This is viewer only. Um, like I said, that's the first thing I, I always tell the guys when we're training is you cannot screw anything up. You're not going to destroy our data. You're not going to, you know, don't be afraid of, of breaking anything. You're not going to break anything. So um, you can download, uh, you can extract. Um, I don't do this very often. Um, you can extract your, your red notes um, to a shapefile or DGN or um, GT viewers graphics file. Um, and then I think you, you can also export, um, you can actually export certain um, data as a DGN or a shapefile also. Yes? Um, do you have, well, I think you kind of let into my question. What is, the, what is the, your training program like? Um, it's, it, the learning curve on this is incredibly quick. Um, Usually it's train the trainer. Um, someone new comes in in operations. They kind of give them a, a quick overview of it. A lot of it's learn as you go. Um, we, you know, they pretty much all the departments know they can contact us. Um, I've, you know, like I said, I spend 20 minutes, a half an hour um, with someone based on what they, you know, what they're using it for. Um, but it's, it's pretty, it's, like I said, it's a really easy software to learn. Yep. What do you have, uh, what does the program offer for GPS integration? Um, I don't know a ton on that. Um, we don't use um, a lot. I know our fire department, they could see all the, like if there was a call, um, they could see where all the trucks are. Um, you know, they have, you know, it, it's a small group of guys, so that, you know they can customize a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I know we briefly looked at it for AVL, but we went with the city's fleet. It was just not, you know, not robust enough for for what the city needed for the fleet. But um, there there are some capabilities. Like I said, we don't. I don't use it a ton, so I'm not quite sure. I think you can. Eric, you can connect your system to it, your GPS system to it. So, the it, surveyors can on the fly download their collector and bring those points in, look for, you know, <coughs> errors. But now with the collectors, you know, you can view that right on the collectors so much can, you know, more conveniently that we don't even use that application uh, anymore. Yep. I guess uh, two questions. Um, the first kind of related to the first question. Um, does it run on any different operating systems like Android or? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it'll run on Android. They do have iOS also. Um, we're not an iOS shop. I think our water utility ran it on a on an iPad, and it ran fine. So. Okay. And, and secondly, what's the backend data format? Is it some type of database? Um, well, we're actually, this is just pulling, um, so what it does is, um, you know, all our, our, all our data is in uh, Bentley Map or SDE, or Bentley Map is both of them hit a SQL. Um, so what it does is it, it translates that, that data into uh, GT viewers format, it's GTX, uh, GTN, um, a few different formats. It's basically all text files um, that you That's can go on. Um, FME, yes, FME will do that, and then out of the box, there's tools to convert from um, DGN to GT Viewer, uh, GeoDatabase to GT Viewer. But like I said, we just use um, FME is definitely a lot more robust and easier to use. Yep. You mentioned the red line, so like in our circumstance, we have frequent issues where uh, somebody in the field says this pipe material is the wrong type in GPS. Yep. And we're trying to find a process to get that back more efficient system. Once you guys have markup, what is your workflow like to have that corrected in GIS based on the observations? Um, usually, <laughs> it's real hot tech. They'll either do a screenshot and you you know ship it. 
um, or a PDF, you know, they can do a PDF, or you can even this GTS file, which you know is, is what we're opening. Uh, those are small files. You can email it. I know, like, if there's a lot of cl collaboration, like between uh, police and and our our, um, our facilities crew for like um, Freak Fest or or whatnot, you can share a GTS back and forth. And say, okay, you know, this is where we're putting the barrels. This is where we're, you know, blocking the streets, and so you can share a GTS back and forth. Yeah, or just keep it on a shared server um, that they can just. Uh, I know our engineers do that for some of their um, sewer notes. Okay. Um, they just have one GTS file that they that they all kind of hit and put their random notes in. How do city crews utilize this for maintenance activities such as sanitary cleaning? Yeah, um, I am not, I do not add that. Let's see what they have here. Um, so, so right here they have their sanitary, um, let's see if we can find some. Oh, there we go. So here's like their hydraulic um, PM. So they have, they just say when it was last clean, this uh, schedule, um, the, the main ID, that's the, the sewer ID, when it's due, and then the, the unique ID. So they, you know, each crew has their area so they can, they have that on and then they can see what's, you know, what's been done. And they use uh, main track, I think, to, to enter in their data. So, and then I think she runs this daily. So every night this is updated. So when they come in, um, it runs. They just have a schedule thing that it updates, updates that one little um, thing whenever they, oops. There's, there's four primary four persons in the operations unit that kind of use this to, to delegate the duties to the field. Um, it helps them schedule. Okay. I think we're out of time, but uh, I can stick around if anybody else has questions um, afterwards. Um.